Hello again, it's April here and welcome back to another video. This week I have for you the April vlog. It's a bit of a short one, but we do a little bit of art, a bit of walking, even some DIY. So I hope that you enjoy seeing what I got up to in April. So the first thing that we did in April, which basically was from March, is finish up Martin's office. So this was a uh, before state. We changed some of the lights around. We got new light fittings. So the guys, when they came to do the lights, they left this gigantic hole in the wall, which Martin ended up filling and sanding and it looked really nice in the end. We also found this very strange uh, thing behind the radiator when we were cleaning, which I washed and I actually use it in my art studio downstairs. I thought, ah, I don't wanna chuck it out. It's nice and colorful. So I just popped my new plant on there. It's a rubber plant. She doesn't have a name yet. So if you guys have a good name for my new rubber plant, let me know. Basically, it was a nightmare. I didn't film most of it because it was very boring, but this is the end. It looks really good. So we painted the walls like a dark blue. Martin's got all his office like furniture in and we got our sofa bed in there and his guitars and stuff. So yeah, ended up looking pretty cool. Another thing I did in April was, um, well, I re-wetted my paints, which doesn't really seem like, it's a, very, a bit of a random thing to do, but you know what? I was procrastinating hard this month. I was doing a lot of my shop update stuff. Uh, we also had Martin's uh, family come for a weekend, and it was a very, very busy month as usual. Uh, it seems like every month is busy. And I think I was just procrastinating super hard this day. I was probably meant to be drawing or something. And I just ended up cleaning my paints. So I have this uh, vegetable glycerin. Glycerin? Is that how you call it? And I popped uh, maybe one or two drops into each little pot. And then I also put a little bit of water in each. And then I just used the pointy part of a paintbrush. And I went to town and I just smushed it all up. I speed it, speed it up here quite a lot, but guys, this took so long. I think it probably took about 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. Some of this paint was so dry, and it was actually really satisfying at the end when it was all, like, nice and gloopy. Um, and as you can see, my hands are covered in paint by the end. So if you have these paints and you're finding they dry out, this is a pretty quick and simple way to get them uh, back to normal. And as I was going, I was smushing my paintbrush, oops, I was smushing my paintbrush onto this like spread in my sketchbook. And this is what it looked like at the end, crazy. So I thought I would take some white paint and just kind of like go over kind of lightly. Uh, I didn't use too much water, so I didn't activate the bottom. And I had no idea what to draw. I really haven't drawn much last uh, last month. I think I completed the 100 day project in March and last month I just really didn't feel like drawing a lot. I did do some art but most of it was either outside for plain air, plain April or just like doodles, kind of like this. So I think I was watching something, I can't quite remember what I was doing but um, I just ended up drawing these random shapes and then I thought hey you know it would be a great idea April, let's fill in all the gaps with black. Uh, I don't know why I always have these ideas to like do this really annoying tedious stuff in my sketchbooks but it actually ended up looking pretty cool and then I had no idea what to do after that so I thought I'll draw some faces. And drawing faces is something that I used to do quite a lot when I first started drawing. Uh, I used to do it quite a lot with watercolour or paint. I would just do splotches of colour and then I would draw random faces on it, kind of like one of those exercises where you have to make something out of a random blob. But I don't do that anymore because I just don't really draw people. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a struggle actually. Drawing faces is kind of hard <laughs> when you haven't drawn them for so long. And in the end, it actually looked really creepy, like all these faces just staring at you out of my sketchbook. But it passed some time, it got a page done, and it was just something a little bit different. And now for some relaxing bird footage from my window feeder in the office. 
Uh, most of most of these clips are quite short because the birds uh, do flit in and out, but it is lovely to watch them. I get lots of uh, robins and chaffinches and blue tits, and it's just really nice to have a friendly little face to look out of the window at, uh, keep me company. So uh, that was bird intermission. I hope you enjoyed it. So this little project here, test and paper, is something I have been trying to do since February. It was meant to be in last month's one, but I didn't finish it. I didn't finish it this month either, either, but I figured I would put this part in and maybe we can have a part two next month. So basically, I got a lovely little gift in the mail from uh, Artie, who I'll leave um, Artie's Instagram on screen so you can go check her out. So I was chatting on a live stream how I wanted to start using paper and I didn't know what to use. And Artie sent me a little pack with uh, four, I think it was four different pieces of paper or artboard. I did show them at the start and I will try and remember to pop them on the screen so you can see what paper I'm using. I basically cut them all up into squares and I thought I would try and do some like abstract tree branches. This was, I took all these pictures in the winter of all these bare trees like with beautiful branches, like very abstract photos. And I thought it would be really fun to do, like use those photos and do kind of like abstract art, I guess. So basically I cut the paper up uh, into squares. I did two squares for each type of paper that Artie sent me. And then I used lots of different materials, including uh, paint, watercolor, uh, some acrylic. I did weird sponges. I bashed it with tissue. Uh, a lot of stuff and this is kind of all what they look like at the end and I also on the right hand side there you can see I also did a kind of little test swatches on each page so I can see how it reacts to pencil, the texture, uh, how watercolour works on it, things like that and that was actually super helpful. So this was the first one, I decided to do something, the, simple, the simplest one which was just bare trees uh, that I took and I really had no idea what I wanted to do. So I just went at it with some colour pencils. I did uh, random colours. I didn't even really think about what I was doing. And I really don't like how this turned out. I, I didn't even really want to include it, but I thought I would just so you guys can see something that I didn't like. And then maybe next month we can have a tiny little refresh uh, of the papers and then I will finish. So you can kind of see the rest of the papers, which I think will be nice. But um, yeah, I just haven't gotten around to finishing it. I've been so busy. Ugh, life, you know. So on a very cold but sunny day, we uh, went out for a walk to Great Mel Fell, which is quite far away from us. It's quite an isolated fell. And uh, if you guys don't know, uh, we're in the Lake District right now. And we're doing, trying to do a challenge, it's like the Wainwright uh, Fell Challenge. There's 214 of them that Alfred Wainwright wrote about and illustrated in a collection of books. And it's quite popular for people to try and do all 214. So I think this was like our third or our fourth one. Uh, we were on Great Mel Fell and then next door to it is Little Mel Fell. I mean, we're going to walk up both of them, but it was so, so cold. Honestly, it was freezing. The wind up here was just like ripped right through, through you. And by the time we had hiked up uh, and walked back down again, <laughs> we just wanted to get in the car. So we'll have to pop back for the uh, Little Mel Fell another day. And next up is a very short intermission where we uh, got rid of our old couch and we got our new couch. Nothing to do with art or anything else. I just wanted to show off our new couch. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that short couch intermission. And then last little section of the video is when we did a very long walk. This was about two, three weeks ago now, up to a couple of fells. One was called Brands Tree Fell and one was called Cell Side Fell. So two in one this time. We uh, started off in the fog. Uh, started climbing up this rocky path here and Martin really loved this waterfall so we stopped so he could take a few photos and I cracked out my, my sketchbook for some plein air sketching. So I did quite a lot of plein air sketching last month. Uh, I have a video that I popped up last week called uh, Plain Air Pro. It was all about the sketching I did. <laughs> I'm really struggling here. Uh, I, I, have, I find it very difficult to film when I'm sketching 
uh, outside. If you guys do this, tell me how you do it. I have taken my tripod with me, but I also find that super awkward as well, like getting the right angles and stuff. So it's a bit of a struggle, but you know, it's a work in progress, we'll get there. So we ended up, 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 up the mountain, through the fog. We met a guy going up, he was coming down and he had slept up there the night doing some wild camping. And he was telling us that it was like so foggy and you wouldn't be able to see anything up there. And it was really fun, like having a conversation with him because we felt like we belonged, like we belonged there as walkers, as fell walkers, as, you know, people that did this, you know, and it was crazy. Uh, we passed a couple of people and it's just so fun to talk about um, where people are going, where they've been and uh, the weather and everything. So, yeah, it just makes me feel like part of it. So this is at the top of the first one, Brands Tree Fell. This was completely in the fog. And we followed, a, uh, we followed a fence all the way up the hill. And this is one of the walks, probably that's the one of the safest ones to do in the fog, just because you can follow this fence all the way up. Uh, here's me eating some Kendall mint cake. You've got to get some Kendall mint cake while you're in the Lake District. But as we um, moved past Brands Tree towards Cellside, the fog began to lift a little bit. And it was awesome because you could actually see it coming across, like the fog came across, it lifted, you could see the lake and then it would come back again and then it would lift again. And it's, it slowly kept lifting and lifting until eventually um, it was a pretty clear day. It was awesome. So this is us going to the next um, top, is it the top of the fell? This is at cell side and there was this tiny little kind of cove, which was a windbreaker, but we had our sandwiches but we couldn't stay long because right behind us were another group that were waiting, I guess, to sit in there and have their sandwiches. So we ended up uh, walking down the hill. It was getting quite nice now. The sun was coming out a little bit. It was still chilly. But as we popped over this ridge, we saw this valley and uh, sat down to take some more photos and do some more drawing. So I'm using this sketchbook. I think it's the Stillman and Burn Zeta series landscape sketchbook. I have no idea what possessed me to buy this sketchbook. I don't like this format at all. I find it so hard, um, even just to balance on my knee, like I find it difficult. I actually need to get a better setup for when I'm doing these outside sketches, guys, because it is so awkward, not even just to draw, but to like fill myself and everything, to find pencils. So please, if you guys have any tips, let me know. But I have been enjoying doing these kind of like more abstract images in this sketchbook, especially just because it's quick and I don't have to like focus too much, you know, on it. I can just kind of get the impression of the landscape. Hello. <gasps> Imagine a dog friend. Uh, and I think it actually lends quite well to the format. And I mean, in the Lake District, like with all these mountains, you have such a wide view, especially when you're out on the top of like a fell. So I guess it is quite a nice format to do it wide. I just find it really awkward for myself. So I am looking forward to getting to the end of that sketchbook and getting another one for when I go for walks and stuff. So now we're just heading back down towards the lake, which is Hawes Water. And uh, it was really beautiful at this point. It was still a bit chilly, but I think I had my jacket off. It was like so sunny at this point. There's a couple of like these little abandoned houses on the way down. And I was joking to Martin saying we could probably afford this one. <laughs> it's got a lake view. Um, but actually the joke was we probably couldn't afford it still, even though it doesn't have a roof or a door. Uh, Martin stopped to take some photos, so I did another little sketch, this time of horse water, and in the background some more mountains, which I cannot remember the name of any of them now, but there we go, that was that one. I didn't film it, I just was enjoying sketching it. And then we walked down, uh, this was actually the worst part of the walk for me. You had to walk along the lake shore, and it was very cambered, so it was kind of uh, your left foot was higher than your right. You can kind of see there, the hill goes down towards the lake. And it was probably a good mile that you had to walk like that. And it was so tiring, guys. But we did it. Another two fells ticked off the list. 
So that was it for the April vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know that I was meant to have a shop update video out uh, last week and then again this week. I do apologize for the delay. Uh, I am going to be outsourcing some sticker sheets and things. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything will be ready in a couple of weeks. I will keep you posted. So uh, yeah, that's it for me. I hope that you guys have a lovely rest of your week and I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.